Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I hope you've had a fantastic week since I last podcasted. We have had a strange one. My son was been um, spring break for, from school, and so we had all these things planned that we were going to do, and all these fun things, but it has been torrential downpour here almost every day. It's gorgeous outside today, you would never know, but it has been raining so much. So we didn't get to go and do almost any of the fun things. On Friday, the rain let up for a tiny bit and went out, but the rest of the week are just kind of stuck inside. But we did get a lot of reading done, and I got a lot of knitting done, and my kids get, you know, built forts and did all kinds of fun things. So it was a good time. It was just very different from what we thought we were going to be doing this week. And then on Friday, my daughter turned four, and it was a good day. I got to go and see friends and some of her favorite friends, and so that was a lot of fun for her. And she got her birthday present that she really, really wanted. It was so funny. We were at the park one day with friends, and some little girl that we didn't know had one of those driving little cars that the little kids had. My son never had one of these, but they had a little girl had that, and my daughter just wanted it so bad and so when we came home from the park that day she went to my husband and she said daddy I need you to buy me a car for my birthday <laughs> and my husband looked at me like what and I said she wants a ride on car so for her birthday we and then my mom and my husband's parents we went in and got her a ride on little jeep ride on thing and so she's been riding that yesterday and we're going to go back out and again today to the park after I podcast and get this and have it uploading while we're having fun at the park and it's it's just really cute to see her driving that she's a little bit scary we haven't hit any parked cars yet or the curb but, but we, my husband was running alongside and helping her steer so but that's been fun and I did go to knit night last night and get to knit on some things and so I will be showing you some of the stuff that I finished this week so first off I finished my hipster hat by Tin Can Knits and this is knit out of some Western Sky Knits in the cake colorway. And I am using, I use the, I knit this up so that I can use up my stash that I got at DFW Fiberfest last year so I can go again this year and get more things because <laughs> that's how I do it. But this color is stunning. My camera is not going to show it as beautiful as it is. But as I was knitting this, it's a lot more blue. And as you can see, the hipster's kind of reversible. I almost like this side better. But it's the, pat the pattern, that's just how it's done. It's kind of reversible. But as I was knitting this, as I was finishing it up, I just kept looking at it and I said, I want my walls in this. I want like to have like this somewhere. And then I was like, I need a sweater in this yarn. And so I don't know, maybe at DFW, I might, I'm trying to talk myself down, I might get a sweater quantity because I just love this and I don't know, would that be too crazy for a sweater? What do you think? I'm not sure, but I love it and the hat's really cute and it fits really nicely. I'm not going to put it on because it's hot here. Texas, we're already getting up into the upper 80s Fahrenheit, so almost 30, or about around 30 degrees Celsius. And then the other thing I finished this week I finished these last night at midnight. What are my socks? Well, they're not my socks, they're for my friend, but yay! They're gorgeous and fun, and everybody at midnight kept saying how bright and cheery they were. So these are going to be going to my friend Lisa, who I don't think was, she doesn't knit, so she probably would have no reason to watch the podcast, but uh, she. And all my other friends asked for socks for this year for Christmas, so I think I'm knitting around 24 pairs of socks for people. So those are done. And this yarn is some um, Turtle Pearl Yarns Striped Toes. Some I had in my stash. This is helping me, the colorway is Rainbow Bright, it's helping me actually meet my goal of, one of my goals for this year, an informal one, is by the end of this year, to have no skeins of yarn in my stash that are older than 2015. So all my 2014 and, and 
so later yarn used up. So this was a 2014 skein, and it's now, I got this in 2014 in the fall, it is now done and out of my stash and into my pile for Christmas socks. They're very squishy and very nice, and I have another skein of the, from this dyer in the Snow White colorway, which will be socks for me someday this year later. Those are all of my finished objects. I'll show you what I worked on this week. I have, it's getting so heavy, my husband's sweater. This is in my bags by Awesome Granny. And this is the Twilight sweater by Drops. And I am knitting it out of some Leading Men Fiber Arts in their DK base in the Into the Woods color. Last week, it was just, I think, right, I'm going to fold it up there on the sleeve, and then I finished the sleeve. So I'm not working on this a ton just because the color isn't, you know, very exciting, like this one was exciting to work on, you know, and it's just kind of being worked on little by little, but it will be done by the end of March, the whole sweater, and that's the goal. So that's it fits my husband really well, which I'm so happy with because he says he's going to wear it. He watches the podcast. So if you, hopefully, honey, you wear this sweater a lot. And then I have started doing the front of the sweater. I had the back finished, and it's just a little bit. I'm not going to pull the whole thing out here because it's huge, but I have a couple more rows, and then I'm ready to split and make the V because it has a V-neck, and then I pick up and do some ribbing around. And it's been a pretty simple pattern, almost too simple. I think my next sweater that I want to do, I want to do one for myself. I think I'm going to do one with some really fun, bright colors and some color work because I need something that has a little more interest in it for my next sweater. Take a break in between because I'm knitting three sweaters for other people this year. And this one's for my husband. And my next sweater for other people is going to be a sweater for my best friend. She really wants a cozy house jacket with deep, po extra large deep pockets, she said, and she wants it knit in all white. So that's, that's and she wants it really plain, no cables, no lace, just basic cow sweater. So that's gonna be a, a bit of a slog to do on that. So I'm gonna do a bright, happy color work, not all color work, but a little bit sweater for myself in between those. And then the next thing is my shawl that I am working on, my shawl, the, um, the winter mystery that it's now over. I need to look up the actual pattern name since the mystery cal is over. But this is in another Bags by Awesome Granny, my Russia bag, St. Petersburg. And this is by Suzanne I see It's done out of some nitty in color and some knit picks. And I, I talked to you last week about how stitches felt and you know I fixed it. I ran out of yarn this week. I think I have, I'm not, 10, 12 rows left, and I have less than two grams. So it's not even enough to do a row across. So let's see. I ordered some more of the yarn from Knit Picks, and I'm just gonna wait till that gets here. Last time you saw this, I had just it was right up there I just put that bead on and then so I've knit quite a few rows there's another bead right there I don't know how well you can see it I don't want to move it too much so it doesn't fall off the needles but there's another bead I love these darker beads on the light blue this is the frost color and it's working very well so close to having this done. I thought that I would have it done next weekend to show up, you guys, but with running out of yarn, that's not gonna have happened. Just that. I think my mom will like it very much. And then I cast on two new things this week. Could have just worked on my husband's sweater, but really, <laughs> I have to keep casting on new things to keep myself motivated. And since I couldn't work, I can't work on this shawl anymore till the new yarn comes, I needed a new shawl to work on. So 
in my Diana Couture bag, which I love, and I always talk about, this is my favorite two-color shawl bag. And so what do I have in here? A two-color shawl. Let's open it up. And you can see how the yarn, I've talked about this bag before, but the yarn can just sit through there and be pulled through. And then in here, I have my two skeins of yarn that I'm using. I can, there you go. They sit so nicely and there are pockets in there and it works amazingly well. And those two skeins that I just showed you are some skein yarn. Now, I knit my husband's grandmother a shawl out of skein yarn. It was the Aisling shawl and it was in pinks and browns and I knit it for her. We were going to my husband's grandfather's memorial service. He had passed away and I wanted to knit her a shawl. So if you haven't been watching the podcast the whole time, then you wouldn't have known. But I, I knit her a shawl because I, I just wanted to ha give her something as like a token of love and just comfort that she could wrap around herself. So as I was working with that skein yarn to make her that shawl, I just fell in love with skein yarn. It is so soft. And I have these two skeins in my, skeins of skeins, in my stash, and I've been wanting to work with them. So I finally decided one morning I was having my coffee and I just pulled them out and I was staring at them and browsing through Ravelry. I even posted a picture on Instagram of the, the skeins and the, the yarn actually matched my coffee cup, which made me very feel like I, this is a fancy picture, which made me smile. And so I found a shawl that I loved and I went to knit and the two colors are cobalt and champagne. And this really does look like champagne. Oh, wish my camera was fancy to show you, but it's gorgeous. And I am knitting a shawl by Alicia Plummer and it is the paper white. I just started. And it's paper white, white like the color. So just the blue, gorgeous blue. And then as you can see, I have started in the stripe of the champagne. And this yarn is so wonderful. This is the last of it that I have in my stash, which kind of makes me sad. I can get more sometime. I won't be getting more soon just because I already have more yarn to show you. But it's just lovely to work with. And I'm so happy to have it running through my fingers and just feeling it and very tactile, pleasure, pleasurable experience. So that is how much I've done on the shawl. I just started it a couple days ago. And I am very much so enjoying it. And then the last thing, because I had finished up those stripy socks for my friend Lisa, and I needed, I need stripy socks or something portable on the go, because I, you know, go out a lot of places and had to have it. So in my absolute wonder bag, this is my only bag that I have, it's St. Patrick's Day, because my birthday is St. Patrick's Day. It's coming up just a couple days. And normally I roll my sock yarn, my stripy sock yarn, or my husband helps me roll it, depending on who wants to do it, into balls. But this, I just needed it really fast. So I wound it into a cake because we were getting ready to leave this morning and I needed yarn to knit on. So I just have a wee little toe. And you see the dark purple, then a green, and then this kind of heathered purple. And then the green is coming up again. So I think it, it matches the bag. It's fun. And these are going to be for me. I'm so excited. I've been, I've knit five or six, five pairs of socks so far this year. I think it's five. This is my six. And uh, they've all been for other people. So this will be fun to have this for me. And this is my oldest skein of self striping sock yarn. So getting it all out of the stash. This is some um, Alaskan Nancy. Fire, fire, it's alaskannancy.etsy.com, but I believe it's called Fireweed Dye Works. This is a very old label. I don't think she has these labels anymore, but it's Lupine in Bloom, which I think is a perfect name for that. You can see the colors, the flowers. It was her inspiration. There's all that information. And I think I'm gonna really love knitting these socks. And for my birthday, my husband was asking me what I wanted to do because he took the day off 
And I told him I think I want to go up to Austin and hang out and go to the bookstores there and things because Austin is just a short drive from San Antonio where we live. So that sock will probably be going to Austin sometime this week. If we end up going, we might not. I'm going to have some of my tea. I'm still loving the David's teas. I, as I said last week, it's my first time trying David's tea. We don't have one near me. We have a Tivana very near me, and I've I've been drinking Tivana for a couple years. But David's tea is just as yummy. I never had it, but I ordered some online, and now I love it. This is Monk's Blend. It's from their spring collection, and it is very good. So that is all of my knitting. Now let me show you spinning. So Erin, who I'm doing the hand spun swap with, look away. Are you looking away? Okay. This is Erin's yarn. It's had its bath, it's been thwacked lightly, and it's skeined up and ready to go with her. And I've got her pack, the rest of the package is ready. I just really wanted to show this because you hadn't seen it. And I think that it's really beautiful, skinned up. And this is a 100% BFL, not super wash, just BFL. And it's in the color Sublime Indigo. And I got about 260 yards of a DK weight out of four ounces. It's beautiful. I love spinning. You can see kind of up there where the mishaps happened. I think there were two or three mishaps, but it's very squishy. It definitely retained that squishiness, which I love and it's soft, so it's surprisingly soft for BFL. It's definitely, I'm not gonna rub it on my face because it's Aaron's, but uh, it's definitely against skin soft for me. And then I started spinning, I'm almost done. I started spinning my October House Romantic Garden, and this is a merino silk and bamboo blend, and this is all I have left. I divided it into pencil roving balls, and because it has bamboo in it, which spins like a dream, I didn't have to do extreme tiny little balls. This is a very big ball for me of pencil roving. So I just divided it into five balls, and this is the last one. So I'm 80% done with the spin. And as you can see, it's gorgeous. And I should show you what I'm saying, like, that bamboo spins like a dream because it just goes like there you can just pull and it, it drafts so so well see it's just ah oh. and that's just when you pull it out for me it just comes out so easily I don't have to fight with it I'm trying to make sure I don't lose that little bit but oh, it's it's so soft this dyer will be at DFW so I'm definitely going to be getting some more of this there because those are my last things I'm doing to use up all the things that I got last year. So that is spinning. And then group news for the group. The Bookish Stitcher has a group on Ravelry. And it's just you can search that under the groups tabs. And I even forgot to say some stuff last week. I wrote notes and everything and I forgot because my brain is just, things just fall out of <laughs> it. And so I forgot to talk about the Russian Orphanage knits. So we sent that off, and I did want to say a huge thank you to Amy, Amy Loris. It, your stuff did arrive on time. I was hearing her say that she didn't think her stuff had arrived on time. I'm sorry I hadn't written you a note yet. It did arrive on time. I put it in the picture. I didn't know if you saw it. It was in the picture of all the knits that went off to Russia. So it did arrive in time, and Amy was so sweet, and she included... The skein of yarn that she sent has already is already up in the stash. I organized it. I've been reorganizing everything this week and putting up new hooks for bags and stuff. I've just been on a, I guess, a spring cleaning kick, as you would say. But she sent this gorgeous little card, and she sent some little tabs, which are beautiful lace, and then a little penguin and a polar bear. She knows about my obsession with, uh, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, I reviewed a book called Into the Ice, a thing by Hampton Sides, and I talked about how that was my favorite book of all time, and I gave just a raving review of how much I loved that book on that podcast episode, 
months ago. I don't remember which episode number it was. I'll try and look that up and put that in the, sh um, the thread on Ravelry this week. So if you haven't been watching for a while but you'd like to see me talk about my favorite book ever and why I loved it, I'll put that in there for that. And she included all kinds of little cute things in here. There's some little uh, Lolo bar, which I love these. I keep one in all of my knitting bags. And a stitch marker. And some little tape. It's very cute. Thank you so much, Amy. That was really sweet. And I also, I didn't bring it down. Um, Daisy, Daisy Knits Jen. She sent me a little something too a while ago, and I think I wrote her a note in, um, on Ravelry, but I just want to say thank you, Daisy. I forgot to bring it down to show it, but when I spun up the fiber, I will definitely show that. But so for the Russia thing, we collected, I believe, over 64 things to send to the children in the Russian orphanage, and that's counting like two socks as one pair. So if you separate it off like one sock and one sock, it would be tons more. But we mailed that off and it's going there and they actually said that they're going to try and get pictures of the kids wearing like a group picture of the kids wearing all the hand knits that we've done and that would be if I if they do do that I don't know you know if the kids will all want to pose for it or if it's allowed I don't know the logistics of that but if they do I will definitely put a picture on the podcast so you guys can see I just it's amazing, and knitters are amazing, and you guys are wonderful. So thank you so much for contributing that and he helping spread warmth around the world. So a couple of more things I want to mention for group news. This is the last week to enter for the 900 member giveaway. I will be drawing next week for prizes, and there are a ton of them. And then you still have a couple weeks left for a shawl knit along. And so if you want to knit one up really fast, you can. And then we have our read along going on I talked about last week, so you can check all that out there. And then we have, I'm going to put up a thread for this today. We have our, and this is the hashtag for Instagram if you want to use it. I'm going to put it on the thing too for the podcast when I post on Instagram. Read Knit Cal. I don't think that hashtag has been taken. But Read Knit Cal. And so you read a book. And you can start reading now. It's fine with me. And then knit something to go with something from that book. And the actual knitting part will be during April and May. And that is everything for group news, except a little bit of the group news goes over into enabling, so I'm going to start with that. Here I have some more tea. So I got a wonderful package in the mail this week, and I just want to say a huge thank you came and he got the, the slip from the post office saying that they had tried to deliver a package and I wasn't home and it said from and it said Canada. My husband's like, the country of Canada has sent you a gift. He was joking about it. But uh, it was from Jody, who is Mrs. Brown's Bags. And she was one of the like six or seven people that I shopped for at the market and got her some mustache yarn. And I did not expect her to send me anything really in return at all and I just I just wanted to she had commented that she liked it on the Instagram and I wanted to get her some because if she wanted it because I know how hard it is to get that yarn but I live in Texas I I'm probably we are she and I are in the same city so I see her at probably almost every Texas event thing and I so her yarn is very easy for me to get and so when Jody commented on my Instagram and said she liked it, you know, I'm always happy to, as long as I, you know, relatively know the person, get them yarn from there. So I just, it's just so sweet to send me all this. She, you didn't have to send me anything, Jody. <laughs> but I, yeah, so I'll go, like, show these. But the thing she sent me was some yarn. I can't believe, I just... I thought, you know, she was like, oh, I send you something. I thought she might like some tea or some mini skeins or something. I had no idea. But this is some Moon Rover Sock Wild in the light-hearted colorway. And it's beautiful. I love this yarn. Its colors are gorgeous. It's very much so my colors. And then this, when I saw this next thing, I squeed yelled so loud that my husband, my husband, my son came running and was like, Mom, are you okay? 
I was like, look! But okay, I wanna, here's her tag. And this came with a stitch marker, which is actually, I was using it on the rainbow sock, so it's upstairs in my bag. I have to get it down. But okay, are you ready? Are you excited? Okay, here it comes. Oh my gosh! I thank you. Okay, so I have these are my Trushka dolls, and it has a little Matrushka zipper pull. And oh, I love this print. I love the flowers. I love the dolls. And it's. Let me see. Mm. Hope you can see that. It says, "Oops, I had it." I love her tagline, whimsical yarn totes, because I love whimsical things. There's that. And then it says, Mrs. Brown's bags. And, oh gosh, her this bag is amazing. Like, she, she's on Etsy, I believe. But if you can catch one of her updates, run. If you, go, if you have ninja skills and you can get stuff really fast, definitely get one and you can follow her on Instagram I follow her on Instagram and she I believe posts about her bag updates and she and her sister said such kind things about me the grocery girls I just wanted to say a big thank you and you guys are hilarious and so much fun but since this is a Russian uh, Matryoshka doll bag I think I should say this in Russian Spasiba Jody Yalublu Etu Somku which is thank you Jody I love this bag but yeah, spasiba, spasiba. And then she, she didn't stop there because knitters are so amazingly kind. She included, let me get some more tea, a bag for a giveaway. And this is gorgeous. I didn't take it out of the packaging or anything. But yes, she is on Etsy. Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Brown's bags on Etsy. All in the wrapper. Oops. And it's knit print that she had designed. And it's gorgeous. It comes with a little yellow. Beautiful. And it even has a specialized sticker for when you open it. And there's her card. So I'm going to be putting a thread up for this in the uh, Ravelry group. Uh, one post per person must be a member to enter. I'm trying to think of what the prompt sh should be for that. Uh, just go look there and you read and you can s and you'll find out the prompt there. I'm not sure what what the prompt should be. I'm thinking like, oh, what's you know the most kind thing a knitter has done for you? Or something. I, I'll think about the prompt because this was so extremely kind, Jody. Thank you so much. Uh, it was so sweet. And then, last but not least, more enabling. <laughs> um, so. Freckled Whimsy. I have their, I have a couple of their project bags, and she had started dyeing yarn. But the first time that she put out that she was dyeing yarn, I resisted. And because I was like, you know, you have enough yarn. <laughs> now I have even more yarn, but meh. <laughs> so she put up that she was doing another update last week, I believe. And I was like, it's my birthday month not month, but my birthday couple of weeks, up until the 17th, it's my birthday, and 17th of March, I said, so let's let's get some skeins. Well, I thought a skein, but then I ended up loving another one, so I got two. But this is Freckled Whimsy Yarn. Whoops. And she included some candy. There's an invoice number in there, but I'll take these out. Sorry, crinkling coming to show you. This is Neverland. I love that name. It kind of reminds me of the mermaids. It's gorgeous. And then the other skein that I got is Princess and the Peacock. Again, love these colors. Blues, purples, greens. Freckled Whimsy. It's gorgeous. So thank you so much, Freckled Whimsy, for your wonderful bags and making awesome yarn. And yes, I love it. So thank you, Carrie Lynn. Now that I have finished 
all that stuff ready for the book this week. And can I just say that this book I probably love almost as much as Into the Kingdom of Ice by Hampton Sides. I found an author who understands my love of languages and this book is In Other Words and it is by I listened to the audiobook of it. It was read by the author, in other words, by Jhumpa Lahari, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, and the audiobook was read by the author in English and Italian. So it's going to look, when you see on here, like I haven't finished the book, but I actually have because the first part of the book, so half of the audiobook, is in English, and the other half is in Italian. And I don't speak Italian, but I have very much so enjoyed getting to hear her speak it, and because she loves the language so much, I think that comes through in this. But that's the book. I would highly recommend it. Even if you don't speak Italian, it's just a beautiful language to listen to. So she talks about in this, her family's from India originally, but she grew up, she was born in the United States, but she fell in love with Italian. And she talks about having studied it when she was younger and then getting married and having kids. And her husband, I think, bought her as just like a present Italian lessons and she fell in love with it again and moved them all to Italy so I was telling my husband like I have decided after reading this book that I need to move us all to Russia so I can write a book about how much I love Russian and my husband said no he said there's as awesome as he is there's no way like if I get him to ever visit Russia that will be huge he told me that maybe we could go someday with bodyguards <laughs> which he's kind of joking about but kind of not He's nervous about me going to Russia, even though I really want to go. But so she takes her whole family there and kind of dives in head first to learn the language because she says, you know, she's been studying it for like 20 years, but she's never lived there. She even went and visited once, I think, in college for a very short time. And she said that you don't, she, she kind of agrees, she does agree with me in that I don't think you can ever fully grasp a language until you've been there. And even with her, she having lived there for a year, I believe, while she wrote the book, she still said that she couldn't fully grasp it. And I loved, I loved that aspect. I loved everything about this book because she talks about how she's been studying Italian for 20 years and she still doesn't know it. And people, how is that possible? Whenever I talk to people and tell them that I'm studying language, they automatically think that I should be fluent in it. And that's not true. I've ne I'm not bilingual. I have never lived in I have never lived in Mexico or I have never lived in Japan. I have never lived in France. I have never lived in Russia. Those are the four languages that I am constantly studying and learning new and I've been studying for a while and varying very various degrees of how long I've been studying them all. But I don't know. I've never even visited and, um, most of those countries. I've been to Mexico with my best friend way, years and years in high school ago. But I, I love how she talks about that because it's true. And then she also talks about a very fascinating thing of when she goes to the country, people often, if she even speaks to them in Italian, will speak back to her in English and how there's kind of this stigma against her because she does not look like an Italian. And I definitely get that when I am speaking different languages, because I speak them, when we go, we went to the grocery store today, and I was sitting with my daughter and telling her different things and asking her different colors and different languages. Mostly with her, I do Russian and Japanese. And with my son, I will do Spanish. And with my husband, I do French. I don't know why. But, so I was asking her that, and the looks people give you. Some people are very not nice about it. I, I don't understand why if they think like, why is that girl who does not look Japanese at all speaking to her daughter in that. So I, I don't know. If you ever hear somebody speaking a language that they don't look like they should speak, maybe just smile and be nice to the crazy person because maybe they just are like me and they have a love of it. So <laughs> lots of weird looks. But my husband's just like, just, just be tough and don't worry about it. So she talks about in this book how, you know, she's been learning this for all this time and she still doesn't know it. And then she also talks about, I loved this description of, she says that learning a new language is like going into the woods to gather mushrooms. So you take your basket and you go into the woods to gather mushrooms and you gather all these mushrooms 
you know, you learn all these new words and you put them in your basket, you put them in your notebook or whatever, and then you come out of the woods to use your mushrooms and soups and broths and food that you have gathered for them, but you find out as you've walked out of the woods that your basket had all these holes in it and tons of the mushrooms, words, have fallen out and you're left with only a few. So while I may learn, you know, when I'm taking it with doing Japanese lessons or learning with my Russian or reading French books or Spanish, I may learn 15 new words. One of them may stick permanently to where I can remember and use it in conversation. So it's not something that, you know, you hear it once and you know it forever. Uh, it's just not that way. And I loved her saying that. She also talks in here about uh, reading only in Italian. For three years, she read only in Italian. And it, that really made me want to go and read some in French because I haven't read anything in French in a while. And so I went and I got, it was free, this, the reason why I got it was free on the Kindle Unlimited, the first Harry Potter in French. So I think that's kind of my, my French level. I, the French little kid books are too easy for me, but I'm not going to be reading Madame Bovary or Flaubert in French right now. I'm not that great. But it's been so wonderful, and I, whenever I find a new word, I look it up and I write it down in my little French notebook, and then I have a Russian notebook and a Japanese notebook and a Spanish, and it's just been so much fun doing all that. And uh, somebody had asked me why all these different languages, and I'll just say really quickly, but Spanish, my best friend, her father's from Mexico and her mother's from Peru, so it was kind of necessity. None of them spoke English. So every time I would go over to their house, they would speak to me in Spanish and ask me, like, do you want fresas, which is strawberries, or different, like, different foods, or agua, and different things like that. They would ask me, you know, if I wanted to eat with them and all this stuff, and they would just speak to me in Spanish after they got to know me. So I kind of had to learn, and in San Antonio, you hear it everywhere. French, I started learning in high school, because I think it is a beautiful sounding language, kind of how she feels about Italian. I feel that way about French. I feel that it's very beautiful sounding. And then Japanese, I started learning just about a year ago almost. And I started learning it because I've always been fascinated with Japanese culture. I find it very elegant. I love the simplicity simplicity of it. Um, kind of the J Japan of the past. And just, I, I just love how it's very an elegant culture to me. And then Russia. That's where my heart is. My heart is there. And I don't know why the language isn't extremely beautiful, like French. The, it, the culture isn't extremely elegant and stuff like, like I find Japan to be. But Russia, for some reason, the history, the architecture, everything's just always fascinated me. And it just has my heart. And my husband was kind of joking. He's like, do you know all these languages that you know? Like you could trace a map of like countries that have fought wars against each other into the, your thing. Like most of these people don't like each other. And I'm like, I'm bridging peace through learning the language, which is, which is just me joking with my husband. But I don't know why I picked all those languages, just that I love them and just that I love them for various reasons. And so... I, I have always loved languages. Apparently, when I was little, my dad would speak to me in German, and I understood German. I don't remember any German, but so apparently I've been learning it since I was very little. But that was a long talk about why I love languages and that you should read In Other Words by Jumpa Lahari. It's very short, and if you know Italian, there you go. That's everything I have for this week. And I was going to answer one of the questions from the 900 member thread, but I'm just going to skip that this week and answer Quiet Zone's question next week. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful week and you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye.